last lecture, we were looking at this example of dynamic programming. The example is as follows, a person has 100 sheep with him and considers a 3 year period to sell them for profit. The cost of maintaining the sheep in year n is 100 n. If the person can sell x sheep at the end of year n, the value or the profit is n into x square x sheep are maintained, they multiply and become 1.6 times x at the end of the year. Solved by dynamic programming, the amount of sheep to be sold at the end of each year. We assume that decisions are made at the end of each year in this example. If we start a particular year with x sheep, that is after the sale has been made, we will have 1.6 x sheep at the end of the year. But the cost of maintaining them is only for x sheep. In this problem, each year is a stage because we make decisions at the end of each year. State is the number of sheep available at the beginning of the year. Decision variable is the number of sheep sold at the end of year j x 1 to x 3 for end of years 1 to 3. The criterion of effectiveness is to maximize the profit, which is the difference between the money value attained by the sale and the cost of maintaining the sheep. Now, n equal to 1, one more year to go. F 1 of S 1 x 3 equals 3 x 3 square minus 300 S 1. Now, S 1 is the state variable, which indicates the amount of sheep available at the beginning of the third year and x 3 is the decision variable, which indicates the amount of sheep to be sold at the end of the third year. Now, f 1 star of s 1 is to maximize 3 x 3 square minus 300 s 1. 3 x 3 square comes by selling x 3 square, we get 3 x 3 square rupees. The 300 s 1 comes because to maintain s 1 sheep in year 3, we incur 300 s 1 subject to the condition 0 less than or equal to x 3 less than or equal to 1.6 times s 1. 1.6 s 1 comes because the s 1 sheep available at the beginning of year 3 multiply to 1.6 s 1 and are available for sale at the end of the third year. Differentiating the expression with respect to x 3 and equating it to 0, we get x 3 equal to 0. 3 x 3 square minus 300 s 1 on differentiation with respect to x 3 would give us 6 x 3 equal to 0 from which x 3 is 0. Second derivative is positive which is 6 indicating a minimum, but we are interested in maximizing the net return function. Now, due to the quadratic nature of the objective function, we evaluate the objective function at the extreme points which is 0 and 1.6 s 1. At x 3 star is equal to 1.6 s 1 f 1 star of s 1 is 7.68 s 1 square minus 300 s 1. At x 3 star equal to 0, we would get minus 300 s 1. So, it is optimal at x 3 star is equal to 1.6 s 1. This is an obvious result because at the end of the planning period, we would sell off all the available sheep and try to make as much profit as we can. Now, n equal to 2, 2 more years to go or 2 more stages to go, 
f 2 of s 2 comma x 2 equals 2 x 2 square minus 200 s 2 plus f 1 star of 1.6 s 2 minus x 2. S 2 is a state variable which tells us the amount of sheep available at the beginning of year 2. X 2 is a decision variable which is the amount of sheep sold at the end of year 2. 2 x 2 square is the money realized by the sale of x 2 amount of sheep at the end of year 2. 200 s 2 is the cost of maintaining s 2 sheep during the second year. Now, these s 2 sheep on maintaining becomes 1.6 times s 2 out of which an x 2 is sold and the balance 1.6 s 2 minus x 2 is carried to the next stage as state variable s 1. So, f 2 star of s 2 which is the optimum value is to maximize 2 x 2 square minus 200 s 2 plus 7.68 times 1.6 s 2 minus x 2 the whole square minus 300 times 1.6 s 2 minus x 2. The last two terms come from the earlier value of f 1 star of s 1 equal 7.68 s 1 square minus 300 s 1. Subject to the condition 0 less than or equal to x 2 less than or equal to 1.6 s 2. 1.6 s 2 is the maximum amount of sheep that is available that can be sold. Once again differentiation would give us a minimum second derivative would be positive. Since we are maximizing we evaluate the function at two extreme points x 2 equal to 0 and x 2 equal to 1.6 s 2. At x 2 equal to 0, f 2 star of s 2 becomes minus 200 s 2 plus 7.68 into 1.6 s 2 the whole square minus 300 into 1.6 s 2 which is 19.6608 s 2 square minus 680 s 2. At x 2 equal to 1.6 s 2, f 2 star of s 2 becomes 5.12 s 2 square minus 200 s 2. Now, we have to find out the value of s 2 at which both these become equal. Now, that happens at s 2 equal to 0 and at s 2 equal to 33. In these two values of s 2, the values of 19.6608 s 2 square minus 680 s 2 and the value of 5.12 s 2 square minus 200 s 2 are equal. Therefore, we say that for s 2 greater than or equal to 33, f 2 star of s 2 is equal to 19.6608 s 2 square minus 680 s 2 is maximum at x 2 star equal to 0 and for s 2 less than 33, f 2 star of s 2 equal to 5.12 s 2 square minus 200 s 2 is maximum at x 2 star equal to 1.6 s 2. When n equal to 3, and we have three more stages to go. F 3 of 100 comma x 1 is equal to x 1 square minus 10,000 plus F 2 star of 160 minus x 1. 100 is the amount of sheep available at the beginning of the planning horizon. X 1 is the amount of sheep that is sold at the end of year 1. So, the amount realized would be x 1 square. 10,000 is the cost of maintaining 100 sheep and these 100 sheep at the end of year 1 will become 160. So, f 3 star of 100 is to maximize x 1 square minus 10,000 plus f 2 star of 160 minus x 1 subject to the condition 0 less than or equal to x 1 less than or equal to 160. 160 again comes because the 100 sheep available at the beginning of year 1 will multiply and become 160 at the end of year 1. Now, we already have two functions for f 2 star of 160 minus x 1 and therefore, we represent f 3 star of 100 as f 3 star of 100 equals maximize x 1 square minus 10,000 plus 19.6608 into 160 minus x 1 the whole square minus 680 into 160 minus x 1 for 160 minus x 1 greater than 33 this comes from the earlier slide value 19.6608 s 2 square minus 680 s 2 is minimum at x 2 star equal to 0. 
So, for 160 minus x 1 greater than 33, we have the first function. This implies x 1 less than or equal to 127 and f 3 star of 100 will be maximize x 1 square minus 10,000 plus 5.12 into 160 minus x 1 the whole square minus 320 into 160 minus x 1 for 160 minus x 1 less than or equal to 33 or x 1 greater than or equal to 127. Second term again comes from here where we have s 2 less than 33 f 2 star of s 2 is 5.12 s 2 square minus 200 s 2 is maximum at 1.6 s 2. Now, we have these two functions for f 3 star of 100 and we have to find out the value of x 1 that maximizes each of them. Now, once again the differentiation would give us a minimum the second derivative we have an x 1 square term which, which appears with a positive coefficient in all in both the expressions. So, a second derivative would give us positive indicating a minimum and since we are maximizing this we, we evaluate the objective function at the two corner points. So, in the first case we evaluate the objective function at the two corner points x 1 equal to 0 and x 1 equal to 127 and the other case we evaluate between 127 and 160. So, at x 1 equal to 0 we find z z equal to 3, 8, 4, 5, 16.5. At x 1 equal to 127, z becomes 5104.68 and at x 1 equal to 160, the objective function takes a value 15600. Now, the maximum among them is 3845165.5 at x 1 star equal to 0. When x 1 star equal to 0, s 1 becomes 160. Now, this 160 is carried to the second year. We once again realize that x 2 star is 0. So, 160 becomes 256 at the end of the second year and at the end of the third year we have 1.6 into 256 which is 409.6 that is sold and we get z equal to 3845.16.5. So, the optimal decision would be x 1 star equal to 0, x 2 star equal to 0 x 3 star equal to 409.6, z equal to 3845.16.5. The most important learning from this example is that the type of objective function, the quadratic objective function in this case with positive coefficients on x square would indicate a minimum while the objective that we are looking at is maximum. In such cases, we have to evaluate the objective function at the relevant points and then find out the optimum value of the decision variables. Now, let us go to another example, the ninth example in our dynamic programming study, which is called the oil exploration problem. Now, this problem is as follows. Here, a company has found that oil is available for the next three years in two of the sites A and B. Now, for every rupees 100 invested in site A, the yield of oil is expected to be one barrel in site A and rupees 300 as backup this is obtained by selling other minerals and material and other types of oil that can be that come along with the crude oil at the end of the year and every succeeding year. For example, if rupees 100 is invested in year 1, it would give 1 barrel and 300 at the end of the first year, second year as well as the third year. This problem has a 3 year planning period. For site B, the figures are half a barrel of oil and rupees 500 as backup capital. This 500 again is similar to the 300 which comes out by selling other material that come out along with the oil. Now, this happens not only for that year, but for every succeeding year for rupees 100 invested. Now, the company has rupees k available at the beginning of the first year. You can assume that k is a multiple of 100. How should the allocation be made so as to maximize the oil available at the end of the third year? Now, in this problem stage is each year because we are going to make decision at the beginning of every year as to the amount of money that is allocated. Since decisions are made year wise stage is each year. In this problem state variable is the money available at the beginning of the year. We have already seen that state variable always corresponds to the resource that is available and in this problem the resource available is money that is invested in the oil wells. So, state variable is the money available at the beginning of the year. 
decision variable is amount allotted to site A. We would normally have thought that there will be two decision variables, one would be the amount allotted to site A and the other would be amount allotted to site B. Now, this problem is such that for every 100 invested you get 300 at the end of that year and every year, for every 100 invested you get 500 at the end of that year or every year. So, in this situation we will not keep any money idle. So, the only one decision is the money allotted to site A automatically the rest of the money would go to site B. So, it is enough to define one decision variable from which the other decision variable gets defined. Profits are such that the balance gets allotted to B. So, there is effectively one decision variable, one independent decision variable in this problem at every stage. Criterion of effectiveness is to maximize the oil. Now, n equal to 1, one more year to go f 1 of s 1 x 1, s 1 rupees is available. Now, this s 1 is assumed to be a multiple of 100 or s 1 multiples of 100 is available, x 1 is given or x 1 multiples of 100 is allotted to site A. For every x 1 I get 1 barrel, so the amount of oil I get at the end of the year that is at the end of the third year is x 1 because of investment in A and s 1 minus x 1 will go to B half a barrel half into s 1 minus x 1. So, f 1 star of s 1 is the best value of x 1 that would maximize the total oil which would maximize x 1 plus half of s 1 minus x 1 subject to the condition that x 1 should be less than or equal to s 1. So, the amount allocated to A should be less than or equal to the amount that is available for allocation. Now, in this case the objective is a linear function. So, we evaluate the function at the end points which is 0 and s 1 and we observe that the maximum is at x 1 star equal to s 1 and f 1 star of s 1 equal to s 1. So, here the decision is whatever is available give it to A, so that you maximize the amount of oil which is equal to s 1. Now, n equal to 2, two more stages to go, s 2 is available at the beginning of the second year x 2 is allotted to A at the beginning of the second year. Again we assume that s 2 and x 2 are in multiples of 100. Now, for x 2 allotted to A in the beginning of the second year, now this would give 1 barrel of oil for the second year and 1 barrel of oil for the third year. So, this x 2 itself would give 2 x 2, because the problem says that year as well as every succeeding year. So, this x 2 would give us 1 barrel or x 2 barrels in the second year and x 2 barrels in the third year. So, we get 2 x 2. Similarly, we get half into 2 into s 2 minus x 2. Now, if x 2 is given to site A, s 2 minus x 2 will go to site B and that will give us half a barrel 2 years. So, half into 2 into s 2 minus x 2 is the oil that we get. Now, what is the amount that we get? Now, this x 2 would give 3 times x 2, because for every 100 we get 300 as backup capital at the end of the year. So, we get 3 x 2. Now, the s 2 minus x 2 that is allocated to site B would give us 5 times s 2 minus x 2, because it says rupees 500 as backup capital at the end of that year and every succeeding year. Now, plus another S 2 comes in. Now, let us explain how this S 2 we get this S 2. So, let us go back for every 100 invested in A we get 1 barrel at the end of that year and also at the end of the third year. Therefore, we have 2 x 2 and 2 into S 2 minus x 2 respectively which are shown here 2 x 2 and 2 into S 2 minus x 2. Amount of money generated by the investment is 3 x 2 plus 5 into S 2 minus x 2. This is because of the 300 and 500 as backup capital. In addition, we would get some money out of the investment made in the previous year, because the investment made in the previous year that is investment made at the beginning of the first year would have given us some money and the same money we get at the end of the second year also. Now, all the amount that was available at the beginning of the first year would have been spent and the return from that is the S 2 that we have with us right now. So, similarly, a same amount of S 2 would be generated as a result of the earlier investment at the end of year 2 also. So, the cash on hand 
at the end of year 2 gets another S2 added to it. The returns are such that all the money would have been invested and no money would be carried to the next year without investment. Investment in the previous year that is in the beginning of the first year has resulted in the S2 available now because no money was left uninvested. The same S2 will additionally be available in the beginning of the next year also. Therefore, we have another S2 that comes here. So, this is an important thing in this problem. Now, F2 star of S2 is to maximize 2 x 2 plus half into 2 into S2 minus x 2 plus F1 star of this quantity. Now, we have seen F1 star of S1 is equal to S1. So, F1 star of 3 x 2 plus 5 into S2 minus x 2 plus S2 is 3 x 2 plus 5 into S2 minus x 2 plus S2 which is here subject to the condition 0 less than or equal to x 2 less than or equal to s 2. Now, this on simplification would give us maximize 7 s 2 minus x 2 subject to 0 less than or equal to x 2 less than or equal to s 2. Once again the function we have is a linear function. Now, x 2 is the variable with the negative sign. So, the function will have a maximum at x 2 star equal to 0 and f 2 star of s 2 as 7 s 2. Three more stages to go f 3 of k x 3. Now, we are at the beginning of the first year. We are right here at the beginning of the first year. There is a 3 year period. So, we are at the beginning of the first year. We have k available which we have already seen. k is in multiples of 100. Now, x 3 is given to site A. x 3 is also in multiples of 100. So, f 3 of k x 3 will be 3 x 3 because every x 3 would give x 3 barrels at the end of the first year, x 3 at the end of the second year and also at the end of the third year which would give us 3 x 3. Now, s 3 minus x 3 or k minus x 3 is what is given to site B. So, we get half a barrel. So, half into 3 into s 3 minus x 3 or k minus x 3. This is the oil that is obtained because of the investment. Now, the money that would come in as available at the end of the first year or at the beginning of the second year is 3 times x 3 because 300 we get as backup capital and 5 times k minus x 3 because of the 500 backup capital. So, f 3 star of k is the best value of x 3 that maximizes 3 x 3 plus half into 3 into s 3 minus x 3 plus f 2 f 2 star of 3 x 3 plus 5 into k minus x 3. We know that f 2 star of s 2 is is 7 s 2. So, f 2 star of 3 x 3 plus 5 into k minus x 3 is 7 times 3 x 3 plus 5 into k minus x 3. This when simplified would give us 73 by 2 k minus 19 by 2 x 3. Now, once again we are maximizing x 3 has a negative term. So, the best value will be x 3 star equal to 0 and z equal to 73 by 2 k. Now, in this problem the decision is allot 0 x 3 star equal is allot 0 to A and allot everything to B in the first stage. Similarly, allot 0 to A allot everything to B in the second stage and in the third stage in the last year allot everything to A. So, the decision would be all the k goes to site B gets multiplied once again in the second year all the k goes to site B gets multiplied and in the third year whatever money that is available is ploughed entirely into A. Now, this again is an expected result because the amount of money that you get in B being higher. So, first two years you invest everything in B, multiply the money, get maximum money and in the third year invest everything in A so that you get more oil. So, this is how we solve this problem. Now, what is new and special that we have learnt from this example? Now, the first thing is that this is a linear function. Therefore, we do not differentiate, we simply evaluate the function at the range at the end points and then optimize which is a change from the previous examples. Secondly, the problem is such that the returns not only come that year, but come at the end of every succeeding year. So, that has to be modeled carefully and that has resulted in this plus S 2 coming in as part of the state variable when we have n equal to 2 two more stages to go. Now, dynamic programming also shows us a way to model 
situation such as this, where the return is not only for the end of that planning period, but also for succeeding planning periods. So, we, we have seen in this example that it is also possible to model things like this, where the return is not only for the end of that year, but also at the end of every succeeding year. We go on to explain another example using dynamic programming and this time we take an integer programming problem or a knapsack problem and try to solve this. Now, the knapsack problem that we consider is maximize 7 y 1 plus 8 y 2 plus 4 y 3 plus 9 y 4 subject to 3 y 1 plus 2 y 2 plus y 3 plus 2 y 4 less than or equal to 15. Now, y j is greater than or equal to 0 and integer, the integer is the key thing. So, far in the last four examples, we have seen problems that involve continuous variables. Now, we go back to the integer and discrete kind of a example. If you remember the first three examples that we saw all had discrete variables. Now, we look at an integer programming problem, a single objective function maximization subject to a single constraint and an integer restriction on the variables. Now, this problem is called a knapsack problem, because the problem is, is about filling things in a knapsack. Now, we, we are looking at four different types of items that are there and for example, we want to pack or fill as much as we can into a sack. We might assume that the weight that the sack can take is 15 and the weight of the individual item could be 3, 2, 1 and 2 respectively. And if we decide to put y j an integer value, for example, if we put 2 of the first item, then we use up 6 kgs of weight and so on. So, we now want to find out how many quantity of each item that we can put into the sack, so that the weight restriction is not violated. Each item has a certain utility. So, we assume that if y 1 quantity of item 1 goes into the sack, 7 y 1 will be the total utility which we would like to maximize. Constraint can also be taken as a volume restriction instead of a weight restriction. Usually in all these problems, the objective function is like maximizing the utility and the constraint would represent either a weight restriction or a volume restriction. Now, let us solve this problem. In while solving these problems, we have to modify the problem in such a way that there is at least one variable with a coefficient of plus 1 in the constraint. Now, this example has that variable y 3 has a constraint coefficient of plus 1. Now, this would help us solve the problem better. So, we now bring this one as the last variable. The y 3 will now become the last variable. So, the problem is rewritten as 7 x 1 plus 8 x 2 plus 9 x 3 plus 4 x 4. This y 4 becomes x 3 and y 3 becomes x 4. The variables have been changed. Subject to 3 x 1 plus 2 x 2 plus 2 x 3 plus x 4, the y 3 becomes x 4, 2 y 4 becomes 2 x 3 less than or equal to 15, x j greater than or equal to 0 and integer. So, we will now solve this problem, because this problem is rewritten in such a way that the variable which has a plus 1 coefficient in the constraint now appears as the last variable or the first variable that we will be solving. Now, stage is each variable, because we solve one variable at a time. State is amount of resource available. We already know that, we do not know what exactly this would represent. This could represent a weight, this could represent a volume. So, we just say it is a resource and we say amount of resource available is the state variable. Decision variables are the actual values of x 1 to x 4 and the criterion of effectiveness is the objective function, which maximizes z z is 7 x 1 plus 8 x 2 plus 9 x 3 plus 4 x 4. Now, n equal to 1, one more stage to go, which means we are trying to solve this problem. Maximize 4 x 4 subject to x 4 less than or equal to s 1, x 4 greater than or equal to 0 and integer. So, we f 1 of s 1 x 4, I have s 1 resource available, I want to give x 4 to it is 4 x 4. So, f 1 star of s 1 is the best value of x 4 that maximizes 4 x 4, subject to x 4 less than or equal to s 1 and x 4 is an integer. Assuming that s 1 is a non-negative integer, which is a very fair 
assumption because the right hand side value is non negative all the coefficients are positive or non negative and these x1 x2 x3 x4 are also non negative integers. So, all the state variables will be non negative integers. So, assuming that s1 is a non negative integer the best value x4 star is equal to s1 and f1 star of s1 is 4 times s1. Now, this is a very clear result all the resource that is available goes to variable x4. Now, n equal to 2 2 more stages to go f2 of s2 x3. Now, if you go back to the problem now we are trying to solve 9 x3 plus 4 x4 subject to 2 x3 plus x4 less than or equal to s2 x3 x4 greater than or equal to 0 and integer. So, 9 x3 plus f1 star of s1 9 x3 comes from here 9 x3 plus f1 star of s1 s1 is the resource that is available after something is allocated to x3. So, f1 star of s2 minus 2 x3. Now, s2 minus 2 x3 comes as follows we are looking at 2 x3 plus x4 less than or equal to s2. So, if x3 quantity goes to variable x3 then 2 x3 of the resource is consumed s2 is assumed to be available. So, s2 minus 2 x3 is the amount of resource available for the next item. So, you get s2 minus 2 x3 which is here s2 minus 2 x3 subject to 2 x3 less than or equal to x2. In this case we need this 2 x3 should be less than or equal to s2 which is shown here and x3 is an integer. So, f2 star of s2 is to maximize 9 x3 plus 4 times s2 minus 2 x3. Now, this comes because f1 star of s1 is 4 s1. So, f1 star of s2 minus 2 x3 is 4 minus 4 into s2 minus 2 x3. So, we end up maximizing 4 s2 plus x3. Now, once again assuming s2 is a non negative integer x3 star will take s2 by 2 lower integer value of s2 by 2. For example, if s2 is 3 units then x3 star can be only 1 unit it cannot be 1.5 because x3 is an integer. So, we would get a lower integer value of x2 by s2 by 2 and f2 star of s2 will be 4 s2 plus lower integer value of s2 by 2 4 s2 plus x3 gives 4 s2 plus lower integer value of s2 by 2. Now, when we have 3 more stages to go f3 of s3 x2 equal to 8 x2 plus f2 star of s2. Now, this comes because we are looking at this variable x2. So, we get 8 x2 2 x2 plus 2 x3 plus x4 less than or equal to less than or equal to s3. So, we have s3 resource available x2 is given to variable x2. So, 2 x2 is the resource consumption. So, s3 minus 2 x2 is what is available as s2. So, we have 3 more stages to go we have 8 x 2 plus f 2 star of s 2. Now, this s 2 that is available at the beginning of the next stage is resource s 3 available minus resource consumed which is 2 x 2. So, we have f 3 star of s 3 is the best value of x 2 that maximizes 8 x 2 plus f 2 star of s 3 minus 2 x 2 subject to the condition 2 x 2 less than equal to s 3 and x2 is an integer. Now, this comes because we have this 2 x2 we have s3 available. So, 2 x2 should be less than or equal to the resource available s3 and x2 should be an integer because all xj's are integers. Now, we already know that f2 star of s2 is 4 s2 plus lower integer value of s2 by 2. So, f2 star of s3 minus 2 x2 is 4 times s3 minus 2 x2 plus lower integer value of s3 minus 2 x2 by 2. This on simplification would give us 4 s3 plus lower integer value of s3 minus 2 x2 divided by 2. Now, once again assuming that s3 is a non negative integer the maximum occurs at x2 star equal to 0. This is because the 8 x2 and 8 x2 cancels out in this example. So, x2 the only place where x2 appears it has a negative sign it is a linear function. 
So, the maximum occurs when x 2 star equal to 0 and f 3 star of s 3 is 4 s 3 plus lower integer value of s 3 by 2. Now, n equal to 4, 4 more stages to go. We started with 15 here, 15 resources available. Item 1 requires 3 units of the resource. So, we have 15 comma x 1 is 7 x 1, 7 x 1 comes from here which is the utility associated with variable x 1. So, 7 x 1 plus f 3 star of s 3. Now, 15 is available, 3 x 1 is the resource consumption. So, 15 minus 3 x 1 is the resource left over which becomes s 3. So, f 4 star of 15 is the best value of x 1 that maximizes 7 x 1 plus f 3 star of 15 minus 3 x 1 subject to 3 x 1 less than equal to 15 and x 1 integer. Now, going back here 3 x 1 is less than or equal to 15 and x 1 is an integer. Now, we have 4 star of 15 is to maximize 7 x 1 plus 4 times 15 minus 3 x 1 plus lower integer value of 15 minus 3 x 1 by 2. This comes because f 3 star of s 3 is 4 s 3 plus lower integer value of s 3 by 2. So, f 4 star of 15 is maximize 7 x 1 plus 4 times 15 minus 3 x 1 plus lower integer value of 15 minus 3 x 1 by 2. Now, x 1 can take only integer values such that 3 x 1 less than equal to 15. So, x 1 can take values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5. This being the last stage we evaluate the function at the values of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 to get x 1 equal to 0 we would get 0 plus 60 plus 7. 0 comes from the first term 60 comes from the second, 7 comes from the third. When x 1 equal to 0, 4 into 15 is 60. Now, 15 by 2 lower integer value is 7, so we get 67. x 1 equal to 1, we get 7 plus 48 plus 6, 7 from 7 x 1, 48 from 15 minus 3 into 1, 12, 12 fours are 48. Now, when x 1 equal to 1, 15 minus 3 is 12, 12 divided by 2 is 6, we get 61. So, this way we calculate the objective function at all integer values of x 1 and realize that at x 1 equal to 5, f 4 star of 15 is 35. Now, the best value happens at x 1 equal to 0 and we get a value of 67. So, the optimum value happens at x 1 star equal to 0, 15 is carried over to the next stage. Now, x 2 star is 0, so we have x 2 star is 0. 15 is carried over to the other stage. At this stage, the best value is lower integer value of s 2 by 2. So, lower integer value of 15 by 2 is 7. So, x 3 star is 7, x 3 star is 7. So, x 3 star is 7. So, x 3 consumes 2 resources. So, 14 resources are consumed, s 1 becomes 1 and f x 4 star is equal to s 1. So, x 4 star is equal to 1. So, the solution is x 1 star equal to 0, x 2 star equal to 0, x 3 star equal to 7, x 4 star equal to 1, z equal to 67. But this is the solution for the modified problem. So, the solution to the first problem should be rewritten once again and we know that x 4 becomes y 3, x 3 becomes y 4. So, we get z equal to 67 solution to the original problem. Now, what are the new things that we have seen in this example? One, now we have solved a problem where the variables take integer values and secondly, we have a single constraint problem as always, but we, we were able to solve for four variables in this case. Most of the integer programming problems of this type, when we solve using dynamic programming, we will be able to solve only for three stages. In this case, we were able to solve for a fourth stage simply because here we, we had a situation particularly here we had a situation where the, the 8 x 2 and 4 into minus 2 x 2 cancelled out and therefore, we were able to get a x 2 star equal to 0. Normally, we will be able to solve for 3 as a special case in this example we were able to solve for 4. It is also important in these examples that there is at least one variable which has a constraint coefficient of plus 1 
so that that variable is always pushed as the last variable or first variable in a backward recursive approach and we solve for it so that we always start with x4 star equal to s1 and f1 star of s1 is equal to some constant into s1. Now this makes the solution easy. Now we could have this is a problem where all the yj's or if we take the modified problem where all the xj's are integer values. Now we could easily have solved this problem by the tabular approach. The tabular approach that we had seen earlier in dynamic programming we could have used the tabular approach and we could have solved this. But we did not do that simply because the resource being large particularly in the in the middle stages the tables become extremely large. Now as far as this problem is concerned whether we had 15 or whether we had 150 as resource the solution methodology is the same. Whereas if we had used the tabular method to solve this problem if this right hand side value of the inequality becomes large then the tables become very large and unwieldy. So we do not use the tabular method to solve even though we know that we can solve this by the tabular method. So a single constraint integer programming problem can be solved comfortably up to 3 variables using dp when one of the variables has a plus 1 coefficient in the constraint. Special cases we can solve up to 4 variables as we have shown in this example. Here being a linear objective function and a linear constraint we do not use differentiation and try to find out the maximum or the minimum maximum or the minimum happens at the extreme points in the range. The last example that we will be seeing in the dynamic programming is to show how we can solve a linear programming problem using dynamic programming. Now to do that we go back to the familiar example that we have seen in this lecture series maximize z equal to 6x1 plus 5x2, x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 5. 3x1 plus 2x2 less than or equal to 12, x1, x2 greater than or equal to 0. Now this is a linear programming problem. This does not have integer restriction on the variables. Variables are continuous. Now the very special thing about this which is very different from the examples that we have seen. We are looking at two constraints here and not single constraint. There are two resources, there are two constraints, two resources, two values on the right hand side. We have two state variables. So far in all the examples we have had only one state variable in this case we have two state variables instead of using the notation s for state variable we use notations u and v respectively for the state variables. So in this problem we define stage state decision variable and the criterion of effectiveness stage is each variable there are two variables here we will be solving for one variable at a time so stage is each variable state is amount of resources available there are two resources u and v namely first and the second. So two resources are state variables there will be two state variables for this problem decision variables are the values of x1 and x2 and the criterion of effectiveness is to maximize the objective function which is z which is given by 6x1 plus 5x2. Now n equal to 1 one more stage to go f1 of u1 v1 x2 equal to 5x2. We are trying to solve a problem maximize 5x2 subject to x2 less than or equal to u1, 2x2 less than or equal to v1, x2 greater than or equal to 0. So we have we want to maximize 5x2 subject to the condition x2 less than or equal to u1, 2x2 less than or equal to v1, x2 greater than or equal to 0. Now, here what will happen is the maximum value assuming u1 and v1 are non-negative values which is also not a very bad assumption because these values are non-negative, the coefficients are all non-negative and the variables are non-negative. So the state variables will be non-negative values. Now the maximum value that x2 will take is actually the minimum of u1 and v1 by 2 because x2 less than or equal to u1. 2x2 less than or equal to v1 would give us x2 the maximum value x2 can take is the minimum of u1 and v1 by 2. So x2 star is minimum of u1 and v1 by 2 and f1 star of u1 v1 is maximize or 5 times minimum of u1 comma v1 by 2. The best value of x2 is minimum of u1 v1 by 2 
So, the x 2 star is being minimum of u 1 v 1 by 2 f, f 1 star of u 1 comma v 1 will be 5 times minimum of u 1 v 1 by 2. Now, n equal to 2, 2 more stages to go. Now, we come back to the problem where we are solving 6 x 1 plus 5 x 2 subject to x 1 plus x 2 less than or equal to 5, 3 x 1 plus 2 x 2 less than or equal to 12, x 1 x 2 greater than or equal to 0. So, we are solving this problem. Now, we go back and say 6 x 1 because for x 1 the objective function is 6 x 1 and whatever resource is left over if x 1 is given here phi minus x 1 goes as u 1 and 12 minus 3 x 1 goes as v 1. So, we have f 1 star of phi minus x 1 and 12 minus 3 x 1 which go as u 1 and v 1. So, f 2 star of phi comma 12 is the best value of x 1 that maximizes this uh, that maximizes 6 x 1 plus 5 times minimum of phi minus x 1 12 minus 3 x 1 by 2. We have already seen that x 2 star is minimum of u 1 v 1 by 2 and the value is 5 times minimum of u 1 v 1 by 2. So, phi times minimum of u 1 phi minus x 1 v 1 by 2 12 minus 3 x 1 by 2 subject to the condition 0 less than or equal to x 1 less than or equal to phi 0 less than or equal to 3 x 1 less than or equal to 12 which comes from here x 1 less than or equal to 5 3 x 1 less than or equal to 12. Now, what we need to do is this. Now, we look at both these functions phi minus x 1 and 12 minus 3 x 1 by 2 and we need to find out the range at which one of them becomes minimum. Now, the point at which they are equal is x 1 equal to 2. At x 1 equal to 2, we have phi minus x 1 which is 3, 12 minus 6 by 2 which is also 3. So, at x 1 equal to 2, these two are equal. So, f 2 star of phi comma 12 is to maximize 6 x 1 plus 5 into phi minus x 1 the first function in the range 0 less than or equal to x 1 less than or equal to 2 and maximize 6 x 1 plus 5 into 12 minus 3 x 1 by 2 the second function in the range 2 to 4. 4 comes in because this would give us x 1 less than or equal to 5, this would give us x 1 less than or equal to 4. So, 4 becomes the upper range. So, we have two functions here we want to maximize 6 x 1 plus phi into phi minus x 1 in the range 0 to 2 and 6 x 1 plus phi into 12 minus 3 x 1 by 2 in the range 2 to 4. At x 1 equal to 0 we have z equal to 25 we are in this range. So, 0 plus 25 is 25 at x 1 equal to 2 we have 12 coming from this and 15 coming from this giving us 27. From the other expression also we have 12 coming and 15 coming from the second term which is 27 at x 1 equal to 4 which is in the other expression we have 6 4 is 24 12 minus 3 x 1 is 0. So, the best value is at x 1 star equal to 2 z equal to 27 when x 1 star equal to 2 u 1 is 5 minus x 1 which is 3 v 1 is 12 minus 3 x 1 by 2 which is v 1 is 12 minus 3 x 1 which is 6. So, from the previous table minimum of u 1 v 1 by 2 is x 2 star minimum of u 1 v 1 by 2. So, minimum of 3 and 6 by 2 which is 3. So, we get x 1 equal to we get x 1 equal to 3 x 2 uh, x 1 equal to 2 x 2 equal to 3 and z equal to 27 which would give us 12 plus 15 which is 27. So, this is how we solve linear programming problems using dynamic programming. Just to illustrate this we have taken a 2 by 2 problem, we have also taken a maximization problem, we have taken a 2 variable 2 constraint problem, we also have taken a very simple problem where all the coefficients are positive terms non negative terms in this problem. Problem becomes a little more complicated when we have negative terms here, problem becomes complicated when we have greater than or equal to constraints. In fact, you would have seen in all our problems whether they were problems such as linear programming or integer programming or nonlinear objective function or constraints or problems that were descriptive in nature which had nonlinear or linear terms the resource constraints were all less than or equal to constraints. We did not encounter a greater than or equal to constraint in our example. For a first course less than or equal to constraints are easier to handle and we have taken examples a variety of examples 
but all of them consistent about the fact that the constraints were of the less than or equal to type. Now, in now do we use DP or dynamic programming to solve large linear programming problems? The answer is no. The reason is we have as many state variables as the number of constraints. Each constraint represents a resource. So, we have as many state variables as the number of constraints and therefore, the problem now gets too many constraints whenever we solve problems of a larger size. Now, this is called curse of dimensionality. Now, we, we could solve comfortably a 2 by 2 problem, but beyond that it becomes that bit more involved to solve linear programming problems. Now, before we wind up dynamic programming, let us also look at some additional comments. In almost all the examples, we had constraints of the less than or equal to type. These constraints can be handled very well by the DP algorithm. It is very difficult to interpret the greater than or equal to type of constraint, even as a state variable. In linear programming problems, when we have more than three constraints or more than two variables, it becomes difficult to solve by DP. This is called curse of dimensionality, where the problem dimension, the state variables increases with increase in the number of resources. Most of the examples that we have used were of a single constraint problem indicating a single resource and a single state variable. In the integer programming application, we were able to solve a four variable problem because one variable definitely took a zero value. Normally, we solve three variable single constraint problems using the approach that we used. Whenever we solve problems with continuous variables, we need not write the recursive relations explicitly or separately as we did for the cases where the variables took discrete values. In the integer programming problem could have been solved by the tabular method, but the tabular method becomes cumbersome as the right hand side values increases. It is always advisable to use the tabular method whenever the variable takes discrete integer values. Now, at the end of the dynamic programming, we move to the last topic of the first course in the fundamentals of operations research, where we address deterministic inventory models. Now, we look at very basics of inventory control in this lecture, in the introductory part of it and in the subsequent lectures. Now, inventory control deals with ordering and stocking policies for items used in manufacture of industrial products. In every manufacturing environment, we realize that about nearly 80 percent or more of the items are bought out from outside and the rest enter as raw material are manufactured and assembled into the final product. Now, items bought from outside or bought from vendors have the following costs associated with the purchase. There are normally four costs that are, impo that are important to us. The actual cost of the product or the item which is shown here. There is an ordering cost that the organization incurs an amount of money that is spent in placing an order for the items. All these items are special items that need to be ordered and the vendors make these and supply. There is a carrying cost or holding cost for the items. Items are not bought on a daily basis or bought frequently. They are bought in certain quantities and are stocked within the organization. So, there is a cost associated with carrying or holding these items and sometimes there are shortage costs or back order costs when the items are not available and the production stops for want of these items. Now, in this course, in the first course, the introductory course on operations research where we introduce inventory models, we are going to consider deterministic multi period inventory models in this chapter. We are going to look at inventory problems where inventory decisions are made more than once during the planning period not the static problems, but the dynamic problems. And we are also going to look at some deterministic problems, where all the data are available at the beginning of the planning period. Now, the assumptions are the annual demand for the items are known, the various costs associated with the inventory, the four costs that we looked at, cost of the product, ordering cost, carrying or holding cost and shortage costs are known with certainty and do not change during the planning period. And we also consider single item as well as multiple item inventory models in the introductory portion. There are two decisions in inventory problems. The first and the most important decision is called how much to order 
and the second decision is called when to order. Now orders have to be placed for these items. So the two questions would be how much do I order every time I place an order and when do I decide to place an order. Now the answer to the question how much to order is given by something called the economic order quantity or the order quantity which is denoted by the letter Q. Now let us go back and look at the various costs that we design. We introduced four types of costs, cost of the product, ordering cost, carrying cost and shortage cost. Now obviously the ordering quantity or the economic order quantity depends on these four costs. So let us get into these four costs in detail and see what constitute these four costs. Now the cost of the product or the item is usually represented with a capital C or that is the notation that we will be using. Now this is given as rupees C per unit or C rupees per item. Now the annual demand for the item is known and we have to meet the annual demand. This cost does not play a significant part in determining the ordering quantity. No matter what the order quantity is, cost is going to be the same or we will later show that the order quantity does not depend on the actual cost of the product. However, the only effect of the unit price C in the ordering quantity is when there is a discount. Now when there is a discount, the unit price reduces by a known fraction therefore and influences the ordering quantity. So the only situation where the price will have a say in the determination of the order quantity is when we are looking at discount models. We will be looking at discount model subsequently in this lecture series and we will see the effect of discount and the economic order quantity. The next cost that we look at is called the order cost. Order cost is the cost that is incurred whenever an order is placed for an item. Now this is represented by the notation C naught, C subscript 0 or O in this lecture series. C naught is the order cost and its the unit is rupees per order. Every time there is an order placed, there is an amount of money spent, it is either money per order or rupees per order. Now there are many costs that constitute the order cost. Now these are the following. Cost of people, there are normally people who work in an organization, who are in charge of the purchase and who place these orders. So cost of hiring these people and cost of their salary and payroll is included as part of the ordering cost. However small it is, cost of office and cost of stationery also become a part of the ordering cost. Now there is a cost of communication. Now the, the purchase orders are made and they have to be communicated to the vendors which would involve cost of fax, cost of sending a courier or cost of making long distance calls and so on. There, there are also costs of follow up. Once the purchase order is made, the organization follows up with the vendors. So there is a cost of follow up associated with this and this cost of follow up would mean sometimes courier, fax, telephone calls as well as travel. Sometimes people have to go to the vendor's place and then get the item. So it involves a certain travel. There is a cost of transportation because these items have to be transported from the vendor to the organization. There is a cost of inspection and counting which we have. Whenever items come in, they are inspected and counted. So there is a cost of uh, the payroll or the time that is spent in these activities. Sometimes there could be rejects which are sent back or some rework that has to be made which would contribute a little bit to the total cost. So all these are the components of the order cost. The other one is called the carrying cost or the holding cost which is often represented as CC, C subscript C cost of carrying. This is represented as rupees per unit per year, money per unit per year. Costs that contribute to the carrying, carrying of the items are many costs. First and most important is the cost of capital. When items are bought, a certain amount of money is spent and a certain amount of interest is paid on the money that is being borrowed. Cost of capital is the most dominant cost of the holding cost. Other costs would also include cost of space, there would be a warehouse, cost of people, people who manage the warehouse, cost of power and other electrical utilities. Sometimes we would need cost of special facilities such as air conditioners, chillers, dust free environment and there could be pilferage and obsolescence. Now all these constitute 
the cost of carrying or holding which is represented by C C. Now, we look at the other costs such as the shortage cost as well as the inventory models in detail in the next lecture. Thank you.